Six items on the agenda. The sixth item, if local adjustments to the adjusted base proportions according to Dan Baker, uh, that will be tabled. So we're left with five, and let's uh, let's move to item number two: budget <coughs> transfer from health and wellness. Like me so, to explain? so let's see. Uh, this is uh, <coughs> okay, this is a $700 transfer involving your attendance at a meeting and a workshop. And it's a conference called uh, Takes a Region. It's by NISOG, which is the Northeast Sustainable Agricultural Working Group. And um, so, as you may know, my position coordinates the Live Well Kingston Commission. And we have five focus teams. Eat well, play well, travel well, heal well, and age well. And in eat well, we're looking at systems, food systems. So this conference is all about food systems in our region. So I'm going because I uh, feel like I, there's a lot for me to learn here. Um, it's a three-day conference. I'm going to be going for two of the days. It's in Jersey City. Um, the organizer of this um, Organization lives here in Kingston, so there's also a local connection that way. Um, so the majority of the money is for that. $50 is for another <coughs> workshop called Solutions for Safer Roads and Streets, and that is part of the Cornell Local Roads Program, and that is right here at St. Mary's Ave, SUNY Ulster. Mm -hmm. So it's Next two different. Thursday. It's October 17th. Yes, is that next Thursday? Looks like it on my watch. Yeah. Okay. See you there. Cool. And you're just transferring money from uh, materials, general materials. That's correct. So no financial impact. That's correct. Any questions on this? I do. Sure. Hmm. Food system change. Can you explain that? Well, I hope to be able to explain it better when I come back. So um, currently, our, we live in a very agriculturally rich area. And we have institutions that ship in food from other places. So we're trying to look at food systems change. How do we get the fresh local food that's in our area into places like our high school? So in Eat Well, it's a collaborative of food organizations, people who are working on food systems. And we are working to try to make those connections so that healthy foods are more easily available to everyone in the city of Kingston. Everyone. Uh, do you work with the school system now at all? I do. I go to the Health and Wellness Committee, which is one of the committees that the school district runs, and we work on food systems change there and about other wellness. And classes. how do you feel about that? How do you feel about that? How's that going? I think that we, the school district, um, I think the school district is complex. I think the people there work very hard, and I think all of these systems are complex, and I think. We need to have more conversations about how to connect people with healthy foods. So it's like quicksand, you're saying. I go back to complexity. I think different people have different goals. I know people who are working on that committee for years yes. and years and years, and they're still they're still getting they're still delivering French toast sticks mm -hmm. after. Years and years and years of work on that committee. The exciting thing is we have some new organizations in our area. We have some new funding in our area that's trying to work on these systems. Uh -huh. So um, I'm an optimist by nature. I yeah. think that we have some good work to do. Yeah. You say there's something wrong with French toast sticks? <laughs> no, I like them. Actually, they're probably the best thing. That's why they go so great. All right. I'm, not, I'm not saying they're not the yeah. My wife was on it for 10 years. She quit after a while because of the lack of uh, any progress on that committee. Mm -hmm. It's complex, but that's why I think we need people to go to those committees so that we keep the school district accountable, so that we keep pushing for healthier options. I agree. Yeah. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Enjoy your drill. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thanks. Thank I hope you can do something okay. with that school system. Absolutely. 
You know, you should, if you ever look into France's school system food, they do a wonderful job over there. Cool. Yeah, they serve fresh fruit and everything. It's wonderful. Yeah, there's definitely models for us to look at, for sure. We could start with, like, fresh apples, Hudson Valley apples. Yeah, we could, yeah. Instead, be, of, instead of California apples? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Washington State apples? Yeah. yeah. Or New Zealand apples. No, bears come from Let's uh, move to. Uh, thank you. Let's move to. Uh, John's here. Why don't we do number three? Huh? John is here. Why don't we do the third one? Yeah, that's the one. Number three for uh, John. Uh, transfer of a, a full time, a full time employee. Yeah. Get him on the right budget. Yeah, I just John brought this to my attention. I've had the guy here for half a year, and I guess uh, I'll start paying him out of the right account. Okay. So it's just a question of moving the money from the one to That's the right. other account. That's right. Yep. yep. So there's no raise or increase of. I buy anything. Nope. No. Just from part time to regular pay. Yeah. Right. He is a full time employee, so. All right. Do you have a committee before? Yes. So, engineering for a full time employee who started June 3rd, 2019, transferred $20,470 for part time and transferred the same amount, $20,470, to regular pay. No financial impact. Questions? Motion. Motion. Second. He's doing good work. Yes, he is. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you. John, uh, no, that's it for you, I think. Yeah. May all your work be that easy. All right. Uh, Thanks for coming, John. Mm -hmm. Let's go to grant management, I guess. You guys, you got Is there bunch. anybody else here? Uh, let's see. Uh, we might just be alone with the dog. You sure? Yeah. Yeah. Management update. Well, draft. I, tried to read this one. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. We're, we've been discussing how could we present this a little better. It's just it's a lot of information. Um, hopefully, you can read this a little better. Yeah. You can also zoom it in on your PDF. If you zoom in to 100, yeah, and get lost. Yeah. Well. We're doing an RFP for um, grants management software right now, so we'll see how that goes. And potentially that will have some sort of reporting system that mm -hmm. would be able to generate reports that are a little easier to read. Okay. Um, I mean, if you see anything in here that... We do, actually, this, this uh, report is only half of our spreadsheet. We have a whole, another half. It has like comptroller's numbers and all oh, sorts yeah, of no, other, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. a bunch of other things. So we try to cut it down to just the essential information that we thought you would want. But if there's certain things you don't think you need to know, you can take a column or two off, and it will make it make it a you know a little wider. Okay. Um, so you know, my intention with these is to do them as often as we can. And I think originally I had said I'd like to do them quarterly, but it's, it's, a, it's a big effort to pull it together, so we've been kind of doing it every six mm -hmm. months. Is that acceptable to you all? Do you feel you want them more frequently, or uh, is every six months pretty good? Um, Every six months as opposed to... Uh, as opposed to every three months. Yeah. You know, I... I, I wouldn't think so. I mean, I'm not going to the rest of you. I think, you know, the 
it's a lot of information. But we fell out of our weight this more information that comes in. But you know, if there's anything that needs action, they will let us know right away. If we need to take a vote on something or approve something. But generally, this is the this stuff that goes through. And, this is like the big overview yeah. of where we are with the status of all the projects. Um, and so, um, you know, here I, I'll, I'll do, I'm not going to go through line by line, but I'll just give you an overview of how we're doing in each of the project areas. And then uh, we're, we have, over the last three months, been working on updating all the web pages. I don't know if any of you have been there on the city website, but if you go there, it has growing Kingston button on the top now. That links to all of our grant-funded project web pages. So each project has, now has its own web page, has a little button that shows you the project status, and mm -hmm. and the same information is on that web page. So, Randy, what do you feel about that every three months or six months? I think six months is good because we have a lot of information here, and uh, I think three months, not a huge amount is going to change. If from one three months to another three months, so six sounds good to me. We can always ask you if we have questions mm -hmm. in between, right? Yeah, you can always ask me about any grant project at any time, and I could come and theoretically when we get the new software too, it will be a lot easier to produce this information and keep it constantly updated. Mm -hmm. That's our goal. So if, if you needed a report, we could probably, once that's in place, generate it a lot more easily. Doug, how do you feel? I think six months is fine. Yeah. yeah. I mean, internally, we're, we're talking all the time between yeah. myself, Kristen, the engineering department, um, all the other affected departments, you know, with these grants and the projects, have to interact constantly with you know, time frames for the projects, cash flow, et cetera, uh, where the grant status are. It's really a matter of externally, you know, for the alderman. How often do they want to see this? How how much of this can you really digest? Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. Um, you know. I mean, if there's a problem that needs to be digested <laughs> for approval or a vote or something, you'll let us know. But you, you, there's a new, huge amount of information that you can get. Yeah. Right. Well, if you have a particular question on a project, I mean, that information is readily available. Yeah. The other thing I've been trying to do, which I don't, I don't know if you guys are on Facebook. But I've been trying to make posts. I try not about to be on that as much as possible. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've, been trying, yeah. Yeah. I've been trying to make posts about, you know, if there's a, something happening on a grant project that's just happening. Like we just put out a press release about the Broadway project. So then I po posted that and tagged you guys. So then you know that here's a very recent update. And I mean, I'm sure you're getting the press releases in your emails anyway, but. That's another way that I'm just trying to get yeah, the information out. I appreciate you saying yes. that. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're so overloaded with productive work. You know, and yeah. I don't want to saddle you with, oh my God, we got three months, we got to prepare this report again. You know? I'm not sure how much. And what do you, how do you feel? Do you think six months is fine? I, I mean, that's what's been happening. Yeah. <laughs> so I think, uh, okay. you know, we are so busy doing all the work behind the status updates. That the status that it's good to do it every every once in a while or every six months I think because then I think about every project okay and where are we at and sometimes what happens when we do this is that it generates yeah we realize work. oh this needs to be done yeah so then you you mm -hmm. doing the status update and then you go do something for the project itself. So it's, it's also coordinating with the web pages. I, I spent a lot of time doing both last week and just shifting back and forth to make sure the information matches so it's useful in that way. And coordinating with the other departments because all of these projects have different project managers. So we had to get them to give us their status updates. So it's, it's about a month to put, pull the, put this document together. So if we do it, then two months later, we start again, you know, yeah. so. I think we agree, it takes an enormous amount of work to put this together. I don't want to detract from the real work that you do. Yeah. You know, if we need to know, we'll ask her. But okay. I don't know, anyone else have anything to do? Okay, good. I mean, I mean I think there's anything that's pertinent you, you need to <clears> let the alderman <throat> know, because 
our term is only two years, six months. That's only four times we meet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, so, anything that happens financially right. is, I mean, I'm here almost every meeting, it seems, right? You are. For, one <laughs> for one reason or another. So anything that fina happens financially, I'm going to be here anyway. Well, I'm just saying. And you know, we're giving an update on a specific project. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're only a two-year term, so. Yeah. We don't see four times about this. Yeah. Oh, we, about this, but we, we do see, and Ruth Ann's here a lot too, so, yeah. well, you're yeah. seeing her close to every month on projects that are on that list, individual, right? right. right. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm good with that. All right. As long as you... Anything you want to highlight on this one that are, are concerned or high risk or um, not going to happen or anything? But I think we should know anything that's going south or anything that's going yeah. great, we, or, you know, or <clears> something <throat> new comes on, I think we should be informed of that. Yeah, sure. You know what I mean, as we go forward. Yeah, you know, don't let it slide because then we because we need to know too. You know? Yeah. So yeah, I'll just kind of go over. Um, we have our our DRI section, which is the first section. Um, you know, essentially most of these projects have gotten into <coughs> we've either gotten it um, into the contract with the state, or we are we now have um, procured design consultants. So um, for our transportation improvement project, we just procured um, HVEA, Hudson Valley Engineering Associates. Which, which number? Which project? That's number two. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, for number four, or I'm sorry, number six, which is our deep stadium project, we've procured um, CPL, previously known as Clark Patterson Lee. And so they're both getting started on site reconnaissance and preliminary design. Um, the Frog Alley project, that's being managed by Repco. What number? That's number five. And they are, um, well, Ruthann, you, you spoke with them. They're, um, they're doing some initial um, work at the site, I think in October, but most of the construction will happen next spring and it'll be finished in 2020. Mm -hmm. Um, Frog Alley? Frog Alley. Frog Alley. Uh, the Kingstonian, I'm sure all of you know, that's going through the planning board right now. Um, and ultimately that contract would be directly with the Kingstonian, so we're, we're not really involved in, in that. Um, our small grants and loans program, we're still working on the contract with the state. We're about to finalize that. Which one is that? Number That's number three. Sorry, I'm going a little out of order. Mm -hmm. Why is Rubco doing that project? I'm sorry, go back. Um, because they they actually submitted a CFA for that same project the year prior, I think in 2016. Um, and they had been working with um, the Friends of Historic Kingston on that project for a while. And so they knew they had all sort of had all of the background to that project, and um, they are able to execute it. Uh, they got the contract directly with the state between the state and Rupco, and huh. um, they're able to execute it more quickly than we Thank are. Thank you. It's interesting. Yeah. You know they actually got that, and it doesn't have anything. It's a little different than their norm. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're not. They're not. They're yeah. not providing housing or or, or um, building any kind of uh, sustainable living for anyone. It's a park. Yeah, it's a. It's, so it's a different kind of thing for them. It's a different kind of thing, exactly. Um, I think they actually are securing more funding for it than uh, what's yeah, available in the DRI. Specifically, what it was, but they're also providing match with staffing. So um, I'm not sure exactly how that breaks down. But they are. Guy did mention that they were securing additional funding for it. Interesting. Thank you. Speaking of additional funding, so for the um, deep stadium work, mm -hmm. what number, Ren? Number six. Thank you. Is there uh, are there grants out there that you're looking at? Because I remember when uh, CDL came before, there was a, a kind of 
a you know large set of projects, and we're talking about the possibility of getting more money and scaling back if we didn't get it. So. Yeah, um, actually, that should be in our staff our update. So, also, one of the purposes of this showing this to you is for you all to give us feedback if you catch anything, mm -hmm. um, and then by next um, well Tuesday. I will do all the revisions and then put it on our website for the public. Um, so I'll add that to our status update. We, for this project, we submitted a CFA that was to the tune of a $5 million. It was the one with the three grant funding sources, and that was essentially for the um, redoing the entire parking lot with right. yeah. green infrastructure. So I'll add that. I'll put that number in there as well. So, um, any other questions on DRI projects? No. Number 16, Hudson Lane and um, Can I give you a little bit of an overview on waterfront projects in general first? Sure. sure. So, starting with number 7, <coughs> 8, um, 9, 10, Um, th those, those four projects and two others, um, we are planning a, a, what we're calling sort of a mega public meeting on October 26th. Um, you might have seen it. We did a press release about it. It's called Weaving the Waterfront. Um, and essentially, for all four of the projects that are highlighted in that meeting, they all came to a point where they needed to have a public meeting. So in our contracts with all, the, all of our design consultants, they go through site reconnaissance, preliminary design. They all had gotten to the point where it was time to have a public meeting. And we didn't want to have four public meetings in October. Um, what date is that? And so, it's, so we created um, this um, Weaving the Waterfront event. It's on October 26th. That's it's a Saturday. Saturday. So um, we also... Uh, look to create a little bit of a different environment for public input and do it in a more innovative way than just have a public meeting here at City Hall. So essentially we're, we're, we're going to have all four consultants from the different design firms on at the different sites throughout the waterfront and we'll have a self-guided walking or bicycling tour. Um, we'll also have boat tours with the um, uh, Hudson River Maritime Museum and potentially free trolley rides. And so on all of these tours, there will be stops where you can learn about the designs for the different projects and, and give input. We'll also have some online tools as well to, to learn about the projects and give input. Do you know the hours of what you're doing? It's 11 to 4 p.m. And if you want to get on a boat tour, there's limited seating. There's one at 11.30 and one at 1 p.m. And you can find that. <coughs> what was the date? Um, October 26th. Is there a sign up? There's no sign up for the event itself, but for the boat tour, you can go, if you go to the city website, backslash weaving the waterfront, then you can go in there and there's a link to an Eventbrite where you can sign up for the boat tours. Boat tours are free. So um, Again, that's the, the major update for our waterfront projects. And specifically, number 16, Hudson Dining Farm has got a match of a million students. So from where? Other grants or? Yeah, so this, this project, um, I don't know how many of you were around. I wasn't around when it was first conceived was um, part of the AVR landing um, for the AVR property that's north of the brickyards. And um, I think this was a grant that was, I guess it was 2012. And uh, the grant was for building a promenade through a residential development. So they worked on design for a residential development with promenade that would be going around buildings and things like that. Now, um, Scenic Hudson uh, is 
working on acquiring the property from ABR. They have not yet. But in uh, the state is very interested in this particular project because it's part of the Empire State Trail, which is, mm -hmm. uh, those of you may know, the governor wants it finished in 2020. Mm -hmm. So um, the Hudson River Valley Greenway procured Alta Planning and Design to re, um, <coughs> recite and reorganize the location of the trail. Now it'll be, it won't be a promenade, it'll be a 10 foot wide uh, Empire State Trail, like a, a shared pathway. And um, they are working on that design right now. Um, so that's actually not um, coming from the city, it's coming from the Hudson River Valley Greenway. So we still have to figure out the, the match um, we potentially may be able to use some of that, the funding from the Hudson River Valley Greenway to, that um, is funding Alta to match the construction costs. Um, we also have another grant that's farther down in here, uh, number 26. That uh, is something that we're also going to be using for that same project. So. Until we have a full design and construction costs, we don't know exactly how much the project will cost. It actually may be less than the 2.4 million that was budgeted originally. So I don't really have an answer for you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's but a, we'll, that, we're we'll be coming back to you. Our I'm match sure. on this is a million too? That's the, that's the match, um, the, it's a 50-50, Total project cost is 2.4 million, and the match is 50. It, it, it's, this was when somebody else owned the property. What happens when the Cena Collections come in? Is we're going to still match that? This is going to be our project. No, that's what I'm saying. Is that we we first of all, it may not cost 2.4 million dollars. I don't know what the cost is yet. They have to get through the design. Is the first design was more complicated. It had pavers and right. I remember um, prom promenade yeah. and. Um, so it may not cost as much, um, and also we may get some match from the Hudson River, River Valley Greenway, maybe from Cena Hudson. Um, we have, have to negotiate easements with the property owner, and those easements have a value, so that can be considered match. So there's a lot of different ways that we might be able to secure the match for that. Okay. So that's. Uh, so we'll hear more on, on that. Maybe. Yeah, we'll probably have. Sorry. There's a shoe to fall on that. Maybe, uh... Sorry. To fall on that maybe. Yeah. yeah, we'll probably have more information in the in the winter, when um, I think that Alta just got their survey done, mm -hmm. and uh, so we'll probably have more information in midwinter, like December or January. Mm -hmm. Uh, is there any project here that you're worried about as far as uh, whether funding will be received or whether a match can be obtained? Or what are you worried about? Um, I don't worry as much about the funding as I do about getting um, state approvals. You know, huh. So like the Broadway Streetscape project, we're still working on the approvals. I think they're going to come in in the next month, but th those are the things that I worry about more. Um, I think the Henry Street project, uh, we don't have cost estimates on that yet. That's number 30. <clears throat> so, you know, that project is probably going to be more complicated because of, I think I came to talk to you about sewer issues. Mm -hmm. um, we applied for that sewer grant. Okay. Um, you know, as far as some projects, I'd just like to mention we don't have any match. So that's exciting, um, like the pedestrian number 38, the pedestrian safety action plan project that Ruthann is managing, that has no match. 
at this point, or no match required. Um, there's a number of projects that are still listed in this top section, um, but they're really almost done. Like, um, or they're, you know, they're, the only reason they're up there is because I need to close out the grant paperwork. So like the Hasbrook um, parklet, that one's all done. I just need to close out the grant paperwork. Um, let's see. Forsyth Park. Forsyth Park is almost done. I just need to close it out. Natural resources inventory. Uh, just need, we just have to close out the documents. What um, number Forsyth? The, the 41 and 42 are the two that we just spoke about. Ruthann had an update on the stage, actually. Uh, uh, the, the stage will soon be closing out. That's number um, the delivery is coming, hopefully, by... The mobile stage? The mobile stage, yes. Um, it, it got delayed a little bit. It was originally supposed to be mid-October, but it's been pushed to end of October, beginning of November. But we expect to have it here in our possession and ready for the public to rent at low cost before the end of 2019. On the Forsyth Park, what playground is complete? It was the playground that was completed back in, I think it was 2015, maybe? Oh. Uh, it was the original oh, so that's playground the that they did a long time ago. This is a, this is a long this time. Is a long, this is a, a long time. Yeah. Okay. This is my, I can't wait to close it out, Grant. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. I so said we did the playground, we, we um, updated the tennis courts, they did paving and drainage in the parking lot, we just put on a new pavilion roof, oh, yeah, pavilion which I haven't seen roof? it myself, but um, it was just put on the within steel, the last or is month. It steel? Is no, it I think it was just... Um, asphalt? Was it just tied the, yeah, I think it was just... Tiled. Okay, uh, that's... Kids go up there and rip them off and put them on. Um, yeah, and then we have a little bit left for a little uh, replacement projects on the pavilion. We couldn't just spend it anywhere in Forsyth Park. We had to spend it on the things that were written in the original grant application. Um, yeah, I don't know if you have any questions about any, any other projects. I don't. How's the chess playground coming at TR Gallup Park? Um, I wish Emily was still yeah. here. I think she's, I, the, she's managing that. What I think the cement foundation was being poured soon. And um, I think it'll be installed in December. Um, and then she's going to be closing that out. If there's no snow on the concrete pad? Yes. Oh. Okay. It'll be installed by spring. I think the grant requires it to be installed and with photographs sent back before we can close back oh. close it out. So we might be plowing out the if there's snow. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> number fifty seven, uh, what is an advantage diversion? Um this is a plan to um, to look at doing a citywide composting. <coughs> citywide composting. Oh, uh -huh. So essentially removing food yeah, okay. from right. the, the right. garbage system, which I understand can have a lot of diversion. weight. It's, it's a high, <coughs> high fluid word for composting. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And that one um, has match, you can see that has no bond, it's city staff and volunteer hours and the consultant. Mm -hmm. okay. Patrick, where are you doing that? Yeah, I got one question. Hmm? Uh, yeah, give me a second. Number 
11. Um, honestly, I wish John was here to explain this. Oh, yeah, there's John. Do <laughs> 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 you want to take on that? Sure, left. Yeah. John. <laughs> okay. It, um, so that is, th this is a result of the, uh, this all stems from the new nitrogen limits uh, affecting the Rondout Creek. And right now we're, we've hired uh, Time Bond. They've been working on this for a while now to um, work with DEC, and we have to present either alternative uh, treatment technologies or outfall improvements or a combination of those to DEC uh, to, to come into compliance with those uh, nitrogen limits. And uh, I can tell you a little bit about where it is right now is that um, this is, takes the form of sort of uh, approach memorandums that the consultant presents to DEC and then DEC then reviews and gives us comments. And we've been through couple cycles of that now um, with DEC. Each cycle seems to take about three to four months of DEC sitting on it. The good news is that meanwhile, um, you know, it's under, our, our speedies permit has actually been revised to indicate certain key dates that we have to meet um, in presenting this, these approach memos to DEC. And um, uh, the, the consultant uh, is, is meeting those intermediate steps. So um, we did have a, uh, a good, uh, we've had some good and favorable um, results, one of which has to do with the, uh, the drought flows in the Rondout Creek, which for many years uh, were just copied from one speedy permit to the next as they were issued. And um, I actually asked the question, well, where does this originally come from? And so in, in looking back into that, they found that the drought flows for the Rondout Creek are substantially higher than expected, which is, gives us lift in terms of more assimilative capacity is there than was expected or had been assumed. Um, so, you know, the, the, everything we're going through is, is to come into compliance with that speedies permit, those new limits. And, you know, as we go, we're finding those things that can help us do that. Um, so, um, this, in terms of what we'll end up constructing, um, which there is a, you know, there's a dollar value there. Um, in terms of what we end, we'll end up constructing, it's not yet known because some of this involves negotiations um, with DEC, and we're looking for obviously the most cost-effective way to, to be in compliance. Um, you know, I was just thinking about the the plant down there. Yeah. Obviously, that location is no longer good for a sewage treatment plant. We have restaurants, businesses, <laughs> residential, everything's going in there. Um, any thoughts about moving that plant? It, I know that it's been looked at. And, um, uh, out of there and putting it somewhere maybe... Your ward. Maybe not my ward, but maybe um, well, maybe somewhere else where it has access, you know, um, to the, you know, obviously you need water access, correct? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we have a large, we have a large area of land out towards Kingston Point uh, that I don't think it's ours, but we maybe have access to that. Uh, I don't well, know, I don't I, know if it's ours. It's I, ours. I'm not sure. What it has been looked at to entirely move it, and the, the costs were astronomical, I can tell you that. It was like in the like 100 million, right? It, yeah, say $100 million to, to pick up the plan and move it somewhere. 100 million above. So, yeah, yeah. No, no. I, I think, you know, we have an $8 million budget for this, and, um, you know, we just recently had the FEMA grant, which I don't know if that still appears on there, or it's been in the process of being closed out. But after the flood damage, um, there was a lot of resiliency measures added to the plant, flood proofing. We got new primary pumps. We now have a hundred or a, a thousand kW standby generator, which we didn't have before. Um, 
you know, so yeah, the, the plant may not be ideally suited, but or sited, but uh, to, to move it, I, you know, yes, it's possible. Um, I think the previous studies that looked at that concluded it was not desirable. I think as a city, we need to think about that, though, really, going forward. With that area becoming such a, uh, you know, that's going to be all that area assumedly developed and or redeveloped. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, we might want to sure. take a look at that. Well, speaking of the FEMA grant, which is number 13, that's still on here. Um, but that's so all you need to do is close that out, so that's going to move. There are two other FEMA grants, the number 9 and 10, and those will also be showcased at the Weaving the Waterfront event. Um, we've been doing design of the lighthouse. Um, there were electrical and heating structures that were damaged in Sandy, and so the, the proposal is to repair that. Um, but it is actually, the timing came, happened perfectly be, because we have the Roundup River Port Shoreline Stabilization Grant, which was the number eight. And they're, you'll see this at the waterfront event, they're proposing some different ideas for getting public access to the lighthouse. With, and one of those is um, putting um, up a walkway all the way out to the lighthouse. If we were to do that, then we could string electrical lines out to the lighthouse. But if we don't do that, then we would do solar. We could potentially do solar at the lighthouse. So the waterfront event is really about showing all those, those options and getting feedback from the community. And so we can't really fix the lighthouse until we know what the access to it is going to be. Um, so that, that's part of that whole Roundout River Port project and then also um, the TR Gallo Park. They're moving pretty quickly on design, uh, but they have to do construction. They can't do construction until the warm weather next year. So those two projects are underway and in case anybody is wondering about those. And if you um, have any additional, if you notice anything between now and Friday, just shoot me an email, and uh, you know I'll have a, this out to the public on Tuesday. Okay. Thank you for all your work. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here tonight is um, come to see if we can adopt a an additional local law to our senior 467 exemption. The senior 467 exemption, real property tax law uh, 467, uh, allows um, seniors with limited income to receive uh, um, exemptions on their uh, city, county and school tax bills, in addition to uh, what, we, what is known as the enhanced star. So two separate, two separate exemptions. What we're dealing with tonight is the 467 exemption. Right now, highlighted in yellow uh, that I for, uh, have in front of you, uh, is a late filing application that we already have on the books that we adopted a few years back. It allows uh, my office to accept a late filing exemption up until um, grievance day. And what we've been seeing is um, that our seniors, 
uh, our, our most vulnerable part of our community and homeowners. And lots of times there are situations where um, that they may forget or have medical issues that uh, cause them to file late. Um, so I'm coming to you to kind of further uh, allow us to help them uh, receive these exemptions uh, for um, unforeseen uh, circumstances that may be out of their control. Um, the uh, staff in the office, my office, I want to commend them. They do a great job uh, dealing with our seniors, uh, tracking down these exemptions forms from them, uh, even having to go to their door to get the exemption, have them file it, uh, get copies of their paperwork that they need to have. Um, the staff really does a great job, but this is just going to be another <coughs> tool that <clears throat> we could really use to make sure that these seniors, let me remind you, have, who have limited income, uh, gross receipts less than $37,400, okay? Income less gross receipts. This is not adjusted. That's gross receipts, and that's, at the, that's the county. Uh, the school and the city limit is even less. So these are people who uh, own a home, are 65 or older, and have these limited incomes. And as we all know, uh, expenses are high today, and missing a deadline could really make or break uh, s uh, someone's ability to pay their tax bill. So we want to make sure that uh, they have uh, every opportunity to receive this exemption. Because typically, if they're in this bucket of the reason for filing late, something uh, is happening in their lives that isn't typically good. Uh, so whether they've uh, but unable to uh, process the exemption themselves, need assistance doing it, or they're having a medical emergency during the filing, uh, filing period. <clears throat> so uh, very similar to what we adopted um, for section uh, of uh, real private tax law 467 subdivision 8. This is subdivision 8A. Uh, be a similar local law allowing me to uh, accept a late application uh, that has good cause on it. Um, and if you read the blue highlighted, uh, it, it talks about uh, what the process is uh, in that. So looking to see if uh, we could uh, have this local law uh, put into place to make sure that uh, everyone who is deserving of this exemption receives this exemption. What would be the time limit after the deadline? Is, is there a clear one, or is it up to your judgment? Um, no, it's definitive. Um, so if they don't uh, have the application upon taxable status date, uh, they have to have it... Um, no later than the last day of paying taxes without incurring interest of penalty. So basically they have until um, what would be, uh, in my interpretation, is, for, now remember there's three portions to this. They could potentially qualify for school. They may not qualify for school. If they do qualify for school, it'd be uh, that last day for interest and penalties for school. Um, if, that, if that date comes and goes, the, the date for interest and penalties for county and city are at a later date. So if someone uh, misses that date, they could still potentially receive the exemption for their county and school portion of their bills. So it, it, uh, this really opens the window for someone in need who may not have filed. Um, and with uh, this new, um, the new way that the New York State is um, processing enhanced star exemptions, we're starting to really see um, the confusion of the exemption process and, and our office continually will call the seniors. Uh, we may go door to door if they need, need us to, and we have, uh, but we'll, they'll come in and uh, we make sure that they get filed. The state is asking a lot of our seniors right now for additional paperwork via just a letter. And it's causing a, a lot of problems and confusion as to who's filing for what. When they, come to, when they used to come to file, it was for their enhanced star and their senior exemption all in one. 
And lots of times they considered it one exemption. So when they're dealing with the state, they may feel, oh, I've already done that paperwork. So we're looking to make sure, we just want to make sure that we catch everyone uh, in the process. Um, if that makes sense. And so there's no significant disruption in terms of the cash flow from the revenues, right? I mean, because I mean, in one sense, if somebody missed the deadline, they're not paying anyway, but... There, there potentially uh, uh, may be um, um, on the levy, if, we're, if we already have passed the levy, there will be some corrections to that. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the city needs to kind of make a determination on that, whether, you know, someone's ailment inside the hospital should prevent them from receiving the exemption. Mm -hmm. you know, our staff is really in tune with these seniors. Uh, we're in a, you know, they call our office all the time. Uh, it's not going to be a boatload of them. Uh, it's going to be few and far between. And it's going to be very few and far between because we're, cons we're in contact with them mm -hmm. via uh, letter, via phone, um, making, tracking them down, going door to door. So it's not going to be a, uh, you know, a lot of, if any at all. We're just looking for that one tool to catch that one or two, one or those one or two. Uh, remember, it would be for all three tax. We would be speaking for all three taxing jurisdictions allowing this. Mm -hmm. uh, so it just wouldn't be for uh, impact to the, to the city potentially. It would be for the other two districts also. That's what we. Yes, because we accept applications for the school and the city and the county. So this would <coughs> put that for. Have you spoken to the city and the county and how they how they? Uh, uh, we have the authority on it. Other municipalities uh, can invoke this. This is a home rule uh, option, and um, have not, and um, we don't necessarily need to. Um, we, this is our decision on, on, on what to do, and we couldn't adopt it for one district and not the other. We would have to it, 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 and, uh, have it as a late filing application for all three. Okay. So the thing for it means uh, create a local law that authorizes the assessor to accept late filings of senior four six seven exemptions pursuant to real estate property tax law four six seven subdivision eight a. Motion. Second. Yes. Another question: Is this a, a law or an ordinance? He wants a law. Local law. And it has, okay. Huh? It's a local law, so it has to go through the process of 90 to 100 days. Yeah. All right. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thanks, Steve. Thank you. And we're going to table the uh, 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 local adjustments. Appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, thank you for your compliment. Okay. Appreciate it. One, thank you, Dan. One Welcome. item left is from. Uh, DPW, that's a uh, <clears throat> zero budgetary impact in our department of transfer. Transfers of $32,800 uh, into departmental transfers, no financial impact. Uh, I can't imagine any issues here. We see what's being transferred from and what's being transferred to that Ed Norman wants to do, and uh, you know, no financial impact. Anyone want to move on this? Motion. I'm good with it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And looking at this, it's 
seems to be a continual favorite bottom line. Looks good. Yeah, there's uh, not much change from the last update. Uh, most of the same categories are still on track positive that were tracked positively last month. Uh, same with the negative variances. Uh, sales tax has been uh, quite favorable. Uh, although it's tracking positive, we do have a, uh, due to the sales tax agreement, there is a give back. Uh, there's a sheet attached that explains that calculation, uh, the sales tax sheet, uh, what the current difference is or the current cumulative uh, year over year 5.55%. Uh, at this point, uh, there would be a sales tax agreement reduction of approximately $600,000 due to the agreement. Uh, we still expect to exceed budget by $180,000. Uh, for sales tax. Uh, the major revenue categories for uh, the departments that are uh, user fee oriented, uh, parking and building department are all track positive. Uh, I have balances there for our investment accounts. Our contingency balance is $630,000. And I gave you an updated uh, unassigned fund balance based upon the audit that you will have, or that's been emailed out. And should be a discussion item for next month's finance. And if anyone has any questions on that, let me know. Mm -hmm. and there's also an update on the, the parking receivables. So basically, in favor of by almost 4% in the budget. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, we. There, there is some expenses that occur later in the year, particularly the retirement system expenses, but you know, when I go back and look year over year where we're at, the prior years we're tracking fine. Um, so, mm -hmm. the departments are doing a pretty good job. There, there is a, the retirement accumulations, there will be some transfers that are going to have to come in from the departments. I know they're trying to cover as much as they can internally. Um, we sent out some reports today. Uh, to get some budget transfers in. Ultimately, some of those monies will have to come from contingency, but we should have enough there to cover. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Questions? Okay, looking good. Looks, Looks good. good. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Okay. We are adjourned. Each of you.